I will be reading in Night of the New Magician, Chapter 7, Start Peddling. Wow, whispered Jack. He reached into his satchel and pulled out their rhyme book. I'll say the first line of the rhyme, Jack said to Annie. You say the second. Then we'll start peddling as fast as we can. The street's empty. No one will see us so we can... Good, interrupted Annie. Let's get going. Jack held up the rhyme book so they could both read by the light of a street lamp. He read his line first. Whirl and twirl and swirl and spin. Then Annie read the second line. T roll I B I Ben. Jack po shoved the book back into his satchel. Pedal, he cried. Jack and Allie balanced themselves on the bike and pedaled hard. The bike rattled over the cobblestones. Faster, shouted Jack. He pedaled as hard as he could. The bike shot forward. The front wheel began rising off the stone pavement. Whoa, cried Annie. Hold on tight, cried Jack. Jack gripped his handlebars as the wheel spun faster and faster and the bicycle rose into the air. It rose higher and higher above the dark street, above the rooftops, and into the moonbright sky. Turn left, shouted Jack. Annie turned her handlebars and the flying bicycle headed straight toward the Eiffel Tower. The white beams of the tower's spotlight swept over Paris, shining on chimneys, church steeples, and domes. But Jack kept his eyes fixed on the glowing iron tower. That was where they had to go. That was their goal. As Jack and Annie pedaled, the warm Paris air embraced them, holding the bike steady. With very little effort, they drew closer and closer to the tower. Soon, they were almost there. We have to land, shouted Jack. I know, shouted Annie. Lean forward. They both leaned forward. The front wheel of the bike dipped. Annie steadied her handlebars as the bike zoomed down toward the base of the tower. Stop pedaling, shouted Jack. He was afraid they would dive straight into the ground. But the bike seemed to have a mind of its own. As it drew nearer to the base of the tower, it began to drop softly and slowly, like a falling feather. The bike floated closer and closer to the ground. Its wheels brushed the grass of a shadowy garden not far from the tower. Jack and Annie pushed on the brakes and the bike slowed to a stop. Then it fell gently onto its side, dumping Jack and Annie onto the soft, wet grass. Jack looked up. The Eiffel Tower loomed above them, reaching toward the bright Paris moon. We made it said Annie breathlessly. Not yet, said Jack. We still have to find that party. He and Annie stood up. But first we have to leave the bike under the tower, like we promised, said Annie. Jack and Annie picked up the big bike. They jumped back on and started pedaling toward the Eiffel Tower. The bike felt a lot clunkier on the ground than it had in the air. As they bumped over the grass, they saw people streaming away from the fairgrounds. It looks like the fair is closing, said Annie. Jack and Annie parked the bike in a bike stand beneath the tower. The area looked deserted. There was no sign of a party or of the new magicians. A single guard stood under one of the tall arches. Excuse me, Annie called to the guard. Do you know what time it is? Almost ten, answered the guard. Is the tower closed for the day, said Jack. Yes, I'm afraid it is, said the guard. We heard there was going to be a party at the Eiffel Tower tonight, said Annie. The guard shook his head. No, sorry. As you can see, there is no party here. Unless you mean the private affair at the top of the tower. There's a private party at the very top, said Annie. She and Jack looked up. The top of the tower seemed a mile away. Yes, with some very important guests, said the guard. He leaned closer and whispered, Mr. Thomas Edison, Dr. Louis Pasteur, and Mr. Alexander Graham Bell. That's our party, exclaimed Annie. Is there a fourth guest? Jack asked. There may be others, but I did not see anyone else go up, said the guard. We need to be there too, said Annie. How do we go up? The guard smiled. I am sorry, he said, but the elevators were all shut down for the night. Even if you had an invitation, the only way you could get to the top would be to climb the steps. The guard looked up, and that is quite a few steps indeed. Come back bright and early tomorrow, and you can ride the elevators. The guard tipped his hat and strolled away. Excuse me, sir, Annie called after him. Just how many steps are there? To be exact, there are 1,652 steps to the platform at the top of the Eiffel Tower, the guard said. Then he disappeared into the dark. That's too many steps, said Jack. Let's fly up on the bike, said Annie. 
We can't, said Jack. We can only use a rhyme once, remember? He pulled out their book of rhymes and read the ones they hadn't used. Find a treasure you must never lose. That doesn't help, said Annie. Pull a cloud from the sky, read Jack. No help there either, said Annie. Turn into ducks, read Jack. Annie smiled. Forget it. I'm not meeting Thomas Edison as a duck, said Jack. So, said Annie. The steps, said Annie, said Jack. Jack and Annie moved quickly around the base of the tower, searching for steps. There, said Jack. They hurried to a staircase tucked inside one of the legs of the tower. Jack gripped the iron railing. Ready, he said. Yep, said Annie. Let's go. Together, they started up the 1,652 steps that led to the top platform of the Eiffel Tower.